What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I basically just have a little bit of footage for you guys. From the last video that I actually spoke to you guys about, I did get my gear ratio in for my differential. So basically today I'm just gonna be taking out uh, the diff out of the drift car. Got the car lifted up. So now what we need to do is we need to take out uh, these two rear bolts here and we have to disconnect the drive shaft from the differential and then take off the mounting bracket there. There's four bolts on there. And then we have to take it off the axles too. Then we'll be able to drop it. And uh, fortunately enough, I've already done this. So we should be good to go. Got the diff out. It's a bit simpler uh, than the two plus O just to the fact that uh, when it is bolted up, you can actually get to these two with like a big, nice uh, half inch wrench and uh, just like a bigger socket and stuff. So. On the two plus twos, they just have more room between the subframe and like the gas tank. So, but she's out. So now what I'm gonna do right now is uh, just kind of clean up a bit and then pack everything up to the daily and we're gonna go ahead to uh, Ringleader Racing and gonna go get the diffs in. Out here at Ringleader Racing, <laughs> Liddy's in here taking apart the diff. And the last time I brought this to Liddy, Liddy did, uh, did his weld job on this. This is a 408 um, bone stock, uh, VLSD for the 300 ZX um, So now what we're gonna get into is we're gonna start taking this thing apart Just what we did in the daily Z the other day and we're gonna start changing out the gears One thing that Liddy was telling me about is that um, since these are used gear ratios Sometimes it's a bit harder because of the wear that they've been through um, To like kind of retrofit it into the a new like R200 diff What Liddy's doing is he's actually looking at the backlash on the gearing that we've already had so this is bone stock at uh the 4.08 gear ratio and this is where it's at so 19, mil 19 millimeters that's where he just had his uh measuring device at 18 19. or 18 okay so we i just looked up the fsm and it says it should be between 0.13 millimeters and 0.18 so i guess we're a little one off one but, in one in a little yeah Pull it apart. yep we already took off the diff plate, obviously the what you guys can see. Then we just banged out the axle sides here on each side. So then what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna take these guys off and we're gonna slip this bad boy out. Just looking at the race and everything? Yeah. Yeah. And these are shims. Okay. So that was on that side. It looks like, I guess that's it on this thing. It's weird. Usually there's a shim on each side. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's just on there. Okay. Got it? Yep. So that's how it came out. You just okay. got to keep everything together. Yep. Most important thing for now, even though you change it, but... So now, so we're going to be swapping this off of this? Yes. And then we're going to be swapping that? Yep, that will take okay. this out next. Okay. That was about 18 ugga <laughs> 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 So now we're gonna hit these, or we're gonna take this, take this out, and then we'll actually be able to get to the splines here. Damn, boy. Bye, 4 0. She gone. Ooh. Ooh. Yo, he gone. That's final adjustment. <laughs> yeah. just put it out. Get out, son. All right. Hold on. Back. Put it on the ground. Put it on the ground. Just put it on the ground. Put it on the top of the table. <laughs> I, got it. I got it on the arm a little bit too, but we're cheap. So we got that off. Now we got this bad boy. Let's spray clean it real quick. Yeah. Let's flip this back this way. I want to check all the surfaces, make sure there's nothing on it. Okay. So after uh, lock tightening all these up, we have this all set together now. So now we're starting to put everything back into the diff. All right, guys. So what we found out is on this spindle here, this bearing. This is this goes to the 4.9 gear ratio, but this bearing's too small for my diff uh, housing. So what we have to do is press the old bearing from the 4.08 uh, gear ratio and press it on to this while after we take that one off. Okay, so now we're uh, pressing the bearing on so that the older bearing that was in the 4.08 onto the 4.9 uh, spindle actually. So we're pressing that down and you press it down to where it bottoms out. And there is a shim under the bearing, so I just want to let you guys there know. You go. There's a shim between these two pieces right here. That's it. We've been putting a lot of work into this already. Um, so mainly what we found out is that um, we were having way too much play from this input shaft coming out. We had too much play forward and back. 
um, before we even got anything else put in. We, oh, we're gonna rebuild the whole thing. Yeah, so now now you guys are gonna have a whole video of uh, diff rebuild because uh, the, I thought it was gonna be an easy plug and play kind of thing, but it is not. <laughs> so I got a whole bunch of research to do and parts to get. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like, thank. I appreciate your time, no, Sean. No I no appreciate problem. your time. And if anyone needs to get this job done, this guy works for reasonable prices. <laughs> At the bottom link, make sure you subscribe. Yeah. And we're gonna get a phone number and we're gonna make this cat some dough. No. It's been a couple days later. I went and I ordered a new inner bearing and a new outer bearing. Uh, so as you can see. We already pressed in the first bearing. I'll show you exactly what we did. It was super easy. Um, the second bearing is a little bit tougher because it's deeper inside the actual diff housing. So we have our old race here from our old bearing. Liddy's just gonna kind of make like a little shimmy tool, like a little tool really quick, um, just so we can actually have, be able to press this down in here. Um, so he's just gonna weld this to the race really quick. And then he, like, again, then we'll, you'll, I'll show you exactly how we press it down. So we're at the point where before I had to go get the new uh, bearings and such, this is where we were. And then obviously I'll have to show you, show you guys, but typically like where we were at, like when all this was going down was even when we had this nut sucked in all the way down, it still had play forward and back like this. So that's why I went out and got new bearings. Um, and again, we don't know if this is gonna work off the rip. We're gonna just see Again, if we can get this binded up or not. Um, this is the first dit R200, early style R200 diff that uh, Liddy's actually done and that I've done. And actually, I've gotten a hold of a lot of people and they have not done this in this specific early style uh, R200 diff. So, like, we're kind of the first pioneers into trying to make a different gear ratio in this actual diff. Back here at Ringleader Racing with Liddy, we're working on this. Uh, diff we're trying to swap this gear ratio we've been running into a headache it's been absolutely insane this is not as easy as a lot of people make it seem online on their videos whatnot it is not as easy as we think it is um this is day three or four i can't remember because there's been so many freaking days that we've been trying to work on this and yes and i'm not lying to you it's been three or four days so let's take you into the shop and i'll show you what's going on okay so one of the first issue that we ran into so step one is that what you need to figure out is your pinion depth so the issue that we've been running into is that when we try to put the pinion into the uh, bearings inside the casing so this is your outer bearing this is your inner bearing we were having an issue with too much play going front to back. So if the front of the diff is here, this is where the nut locks into the diff housing onto the spindle. This, we had play this way, which you're not supposed to have. There should be a preload on these two bearings here. So what we did is we actually put um, little shims here. So, and again, I'll show you exactly where we put the shims and whatnot. And then, um, again, our issue was, was that we weren't able to have the pre correct preload in here and then we weren't having the right pattern, like this was not coming in contact with the ring correctly. So this is what we had to, I, he taught me a lot about is the pinion depth. So after figuring out your pinion depth, the second thing what we need to do is figure out our backlash. These are all the shims that I got here. So now again, talking with Liddy, we've done a few, I've done, I've done a ton of research on just trying to see what shims I can get for our differential. So this is an R200V. It's not the uh, long nose R200 that go in most 240s. This is in a 300ZX now. So first things first, our diffs do not use a crush sleeve. I talked to Z1 Motorsports. They said our early style R200 diffs do not use a crush sleeve. So that was the first thing that I talked to Liddy about. And he was like, maybe it's a crush sleeve. Like that's what we're having an issue with pinion depth. That wasn't it. After a few days of frustration, we got this figured out. All, yep. we're, we're ready to do the final assembly, lock type blue it and all that kind yep. of stuff. Okay guys, so since we've taken everything apart, we've checked in backlash already, we've checked everything, we've checked exactly what we need to ship and whatnot, so this is what you guys need to do. So with just the diff housing here, okay, with our new bearings pressed in, we have a, uh, from a Ford 8.8 rear end, we have an, uh, oil an oil slinger here, okay? So if you can see, See, I'll move it. So it's basically just a thin washer, 
But again, it's specifically from a Ford 8.8 uh, oil slinger. That's what that is in there. Okay. Then we have that bearing and then we have our brand new seal here. Okay. So that's what we have here. Now moving to our pinion shaft. This is, this was the nightmare of the whole entire project. Okay. So what we have here, typically when you have the, the this set here, okay, it's going to come with this spacer. Okay. This meatball slash grenade looking spacer the pinion shaft itself, your bearing, and then you're gonna see some shims under the bearing, okay? Typically, the shim looks like this. It has a beveled piece here, okay? And typically, what you would do for the beveled piece, you'd put this facing down here, and it would be under the bearing. But what we ran into is we were running into an issue with the pinion depth getting into the ring gear. So what we found out what works is we have three different shims there under the bearing on the pinion shaft, okay? These shims came from um, a Toyota car. I ordered all these shims from a Toyota uh, dealership, okay? They came out of, uh, I, I forgot exactly what years. I'll put the part numbers. You guys can actually see the part numbers here. The three specific shims that we use for this R200 with this gear set was uh, this part number here, this part number here, and this part number here. So those three shims are under our bearing, okay? And it equals 5.5 million. Okay, yeah, and then like Sean just said, these equal, these shims together, if you use your uh, micrometer, it equals 5.5 uh, millimeters. Yep. yep. Okay. So that's that. That is our setup here. Then we also, now going back to these two spacers, we also have a shim from a nine inch rear end shim kit. Yep. It was the smallest shim that we could find. It was just something that Sean had in his uh, shop that we put this on top of the meatball. Then we put our thick spacer on top of that. We place that on the pinion shaft, and that is, this is our complete setup for our pinion shaft. Okay, so now going off of this setup, we come to here. This is pretty self-explanatory. All you have to do is change the ring gear off, put the ring gear on. When you put the ring gear on, you're going to uh, lock tight all of these. You're going to lock tight these down. Um, they do have specific torque settings. You guys can look that up in the FSM. Typically, me and Sean, we just lock it down with an impact, and they're good to go. We're going to go start getting into the assembly part, and we'll basically start going now. We've done this a million times, so <laughs> Sean's pretty much got this on lock, putting this back together. So again, you just want to make sure that that uh, oil slinger is kind of centered on the spindle there. Then you're going to put the splines together. There, I'm gonna have to hold this for him so he can put the, that in place. So that's in place. Just clean this real quick. Yep. Even though this is a pinch nut, we're gonna Loctite blue it too. Yep. So the reason why we're, uh, we're lock tightening this pinch nut is because if we do press it down all the way, the preload on the bearing is a little too much. So what we that need to do, yeah, just a, a little too much. So all we do is we back it off just the slightest bit to get that correct preload uh, setting. Um, the pre, I forgot what the FSM again was on the preload. I'll put everything down in the description of uh, what the preload set should be at. Um, Again, I, like I said, I'll put those down in the description. Okay, it's a little tight, but yeah. one good launch, and I should free up. I yep. wouldn't go any tighter than that. There you go. That's okay. that. So this is all set now. So now uh, we have our preload on our bearings. 
Yep. And that's what those shims were for and that oil slinger's for, to have us have this correctly. Because when we did not have those two, shim, that little shim on the meatball and the uh, oil slinger shim in there, yep. it, was, it, was, they, it would have an up and down play and it would not, there would be no preload on it. Yep. Yep. So. So now this is where we get into the fun part. Do we, uh, can we measure these shims for them too? Do we have a... Yeah, that was okay. the that was the seven. Oh, okay. okay. Wait, yeah. let me slide this in here first. So we're gonna just slide this in. So this is another way that we found out the easiest way to do it was slide the whole ring gear in this way, flip it up, and then I'll hold it like this, and he'll kind of poke around and get these get these races in correctly. Two point one in inches. This was a stock right? one. This was a stock one. Yeah, two point one. Nope, that's in millimeters. In millimeters, okay. That's two point one in millimeters. Two point one in millimeters. That and this, on this side. Yep. And you got to bump this whole thing over this way. There you go. Get this race over here. Like that. And we found out this is stock. Yep. This is stock. Yep. Okay. But what we found out is this from the Jeep. So yeah, Dana. we found out a, uh, they're all in this bag right here. Dana 44. Yep, so we found a shim kit that's gonna work for this for your carrier bearings, okay? If you have to shim all of these to get it perfect. Yep, so the shim kit is from a Dana 44 Jeep, Jeep rear end uh, differential shim kit. So um, again, I'll put a link in the description for you guys. So uh, you can order a set. For $22, but I knew that Robbie is going to be doing the same thing, so we ordered two sets, so it was like $44 on eBay. Um, that was the cheapest I could find it, and it came with enough shims to make this work correctly. So, oh, and this is the factory one, too. Yep, so he's got a factory one in. So I'm just going to put a little bit more pressure on the yep. the, the load here. Yeah. so we we're trying to tighten up the backlash. So can you show that? Is there the paper thin one in yeah, there? Yeah, the paper yep. thin one's right here. So we have a very, very thin shim from the Dana 44 kit right there, okay? And we got, and we got that in first. Yep. So it don't get crushed. Yep. This is about a 2.0, 2.0 shim on this side. 2.0 shim. Yep. Okay. 2.0 millimeter, that's millimeters. Yep. Put that in next so that to protect that. Yep. So he puts that to protect that very, very thin shim. Because yep. then we're gonna put apply some pressure to set the preload, preload on the carrier the bearings. So get this in started. And first. then this is the biggest shim here. And this. And now you, you guys, what you guys wanna make sure is when you're tapping these shims in for this, you wanna use either like a brass um, hammer or like a rubber hammer. Yeah, something not steel. Something not steel because you will crack. Yeah, it's only cast. Yeah. You will crack the shims because they're only casted. So this is a piece Sometimes of. Sometimes when it gets messed up, it, not that this one is, but yeah. you can pry this and kind of square it up a little bit. Okay. But take like a piece of aluminum. Yeah, too. a piece of aluminum. Oh, hold it. Yep. There you go. Nice and sat. Put in correctly. Okay, let me lay this down and yep. break clean this. Or oh, actually, just do it there. Yep. So he's just break cleaning all the. Uh... I'm gonna lock tight these blue these caps in too. Okay. Why not? Just so back out ever. Yeah. I don't want to ever do this again. <laughs> <laughs> You guys don't even understand how many times we've done this. So Liddy doesn't want to do this again. I'll do it again. I, I told him I told him for the right price he'll do it again, but <laughs> this is it's been a learning experience because this has never been done in this specific diff. Um it's and, a new one to me, that's and, sure. and maybe if it has been done, no one's done a write-up or a video like this. So you guys, I hope this is beneficial for you because it's was crazy crazy yeah yeah so that's another thing that i was about to say is that you whatever side that you take these off and take them off put that one yeah take it off put that one in. exactly this is the top that's the bottom yeah never mix them up you de never want to mix these up because they will crack so once you take it off make sure that the top bolt is always going to be in the top bolt on this side and same thing on this side and then you should be fine from there but just don't mix them up because you will crack them and then you'll be sol so he uh, basically finger tightens them first, then he's gonna... Just a little rub tap maybe, just yep. to set them in. Just to make sure. You just take a gun like this that don't have a lot of power, yep. just in case. 
make sure these line up right. Just so we, again, we don't crack these, so. Nope, that's good. On a wild guess? Yeah. That's about 90. That's about 90. About 90. About 90. Good enough. Yep. Hey, you feel that? Yep. Got a little bit of play. So that's the backlash that we were talking about. Yep. Feels real good. Then we already painted this up. We took forever to get it to this. Yep. But so <laughs> I'm gonna try to get you guys in here to show you the pattern. This is a used gear set, okay? So you pretty much to get something perfect with a used gear set is pretty much impossible. Um, again, we don't know how many miles has been on this gear set. We don't know where it's been used, how it's been beat on, but so you can see how it kind of gets, there's yellow on each side and there's kind of dark in the middle here. It shows this like kind of like football pattern and it's, this is the best that we've got it to. It shows it on both sides. In the center, it's not high or yep, low on, yep. the, on the tooth. The contact pattern. Yep. So it's, you've got a little bit. Right here, you can see them. You can see it real good over here if you come over yep. here. And then we'll go over here just to show you guys exactly what we're talking about. It should be on both sides. Oh yeah, that's better. There's football in the middle. Yeah, we don't see the footballs going down in the middle there. That's what you want for a gear pattern. Took forever. Took forever because what you have to do now. This is the one thing that Liddy was explaining to me is that if you move the pinion up into the gear, then to work with backlash, you have to work with the shims on the, on the sides side. of the carrier bearings. Then if you take a shim off of this side, you're gonna have to add it. To the opposite side because it still has to be preloaded on the carrier bearings exactly have to be, everything has to have a preload on it exactly so everything's preloaded the gear pattern is the best that we could get it in these three four days that we worked on this thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> and with all the shims that we've bought in with everything that we've taken apart put back together this is the best of the best that we got it and he feels comfortable he yep. builds rear ends all the time and he feels comfortable that i will drive on this thing so i trust him so now this tool specifically has this magnet here to sit on the casing and then um, it's going to tell us exactly what our backlash is within there are certain specs where you should be with the backlash um i remember when we took this out of the car it was at point uh 20 yeah it was like point one nine point two zero um it could have been a little bit that it could be a little bit high i know that the fsm is supposed to be at point one zero to point one eight, I think it is, or whatnot. Um, last time that we did this, before we showed you guys, zero, fifteen-ish. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So point one seven okay, again. About sixteen, actually. Yeah. So it's within specs. Yeah. It, this is practically within the spec, and again, um, we could try to throw another shim in there, but. Again, that it might throw something off, and then we just be back at ground zero. It ain't worth this, it. it's not worth it, especially with a used gear, a used gear set that we don't even know how many miles again, or if it was abused or whatnot. So we're within spec. We're good. We have a good pattern. We have great bearing preload on the carrier bearings, the front and inner, uh, all new seals. So now basically that's it. We just gotta. Uh, Clean this up, brake clean this up, clean out the housing, and then just new seal, fluid, and we're freaking ripping with a new gear set. Thank you, Sean. No problem, Thank man, you, bro. No freaking ringleader racing, bro. He's always coming through. You, like, he's got so many projects, guys. Like, you don't even understand. And he's out here helping me with this freaking piece of crap. It's midnight. And it's midnight. It is midnight. <laughs> on day three or four, it's midnight right now. Yeah. So we've been at this again all day on this, on this third day or whatever. I'm happy we finally got it right. We got it. We got it. And now he's going to be able to sleep. I'm going to be able to sleep. And I'm going to be able to rip. So I'm so pumped again. And like, like I said, man, he's got crazy projects like building this freaking tundra's turbo kit is ridiculous like this is all his work it's crazy so he's been working on this and then he's i'm here and then he's like all right we're going to your diff so again i appreciate it sean you're the man i hope you guys understand <laughs> this is not an easy job when i first came into here i actually came here with my father i was thinking like you know what i mean we could just take it out i i was under the impression that we could just take out gears put in new gears be good to go. That is not the case, you guys. I just want to explain that to you. Put a disclaimer out that all the videos that you've seen on there, I've seen videos of people doing R200s, um, the long nose, 
for out of 240s and such, just swap the gears over. It's not that simple. They don't show you how to, they tell you that they do the backlash or they do uh, the, the gear pattern and stuff. They, they tell, I've, I'm telling you right now, they tell you, they do not show you. We've showed you guys exactly what you guys need to do and how to do it and how to properly set each bearing preload and again with the shims on the sides. I remember looking in the comments and people were like, oh, well, what about the shims? Where do you get the shims? This and that. No one responds to it. Um, uh, again, I think there's only like two or three videos out there that me and uh, Liddy have literally like dissected. And he's like, dude, there's nothing. There, there, there's no information on what you need to get. So we figured it out. We figured it out. We're, we are the, we're the first to officially do this the proper way and to show you guys. So now you guys, this will be five times easier for you guys. And I mean, if you want to do it yourself, you can do it yourself, but I highly suggest not to have a professional do it. One last go over. Okay. So this is what I'm doing. Oh, this set of shims here is technically two sets of shims. Okay. Two sets of shims, Dana 44 rear end Jeep. Okay. That's where that came from. These shims, okay, again, the part numbers are 35498, 35499, and then 35502. That's from a Toyota dealership. Those are the parts numbers from a Toyota dealership. I did buy three extras. These three added up to 5.5 millimeters, okay, and these sit under the bearing on the pinion shaft. Then we had, um, I did not get the measurement of the uh, four nine inch rear end shim kit shim that sits uh, above the meatball under the thick spacer. I did not get the size of that, but it, he, uh, we did go through the box. It is the smallest one out of that shim kit. It's gonna suck if you guys have to buy a whole shim kit for that, but it is what it is to get it done right. And then also that 8.8 uh, .8 oil slinger is in the front there. And that's basically what you guys need. And then you also, obviously you need your gear change. So the correct pinion and the correct uh, ring gear. And if you guys wanted to know too, is the seals I got from, so the front seal and the two side seals I got from Z1 Motorsports as always, you guys know that. So that's that man. Finally back home with the drift car, with our brand new gear set and our diff, all the extra parts. <laughs> I still have Robbie's uh, gear set here too, but um, man, what a freaking challenge. What an adventure just diving into this. Again, you guys know I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a professional. I am self-taught and what I, what, if I am learning by anything or anybody, it is Sean, Sean, Tuan, Robbie, Mark, um, all the guys. So, I mean, it's it's been a learning experience for sure. Again, this is uncharted territory where not a lot of people have gone, especially for Z32s, um, and specifically for our R200 uh, early style diff. I hope this video has been in, like inspirational, informational, um, and I hope it just helps you in the long run if you do want to swap your gear ratio uh, in your rear end. It's pretty late. It's uh, 1.15 in the morning. Um, this is again our third day, our, the, our third day or fourth day in about three weeks um, separated by each and it's just been, it's been hectic and I mean today we just put in another seven hours to do this so it's, uh, it's been something, it's been crazy but again Sean, thank you so much man. I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. I really can't thank you enough. It's just been, it's crazy to see how things, what you have to do and what you need to understand to make things work correctly and um, that they're not gonna break on tracks. And again, I trust you, I trust his judgment. Guys, I've been having the same diff, stock diff in my car for five years and I had no issues with it. So with this now, it's gonna be a whole new ball game. We're gonna be up there, we're gonna be getting it, so I can't wait. If you guys have not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you guys are looking for any additional content, click one of these links here. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.